So good. Yeah, Flavius says yes. All right, so we'll probably start. So thank you very much all uh, for attending uh, this live session. This is my seventh live session. I'm now doing this on Facebook and uh, Instagram. So every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And mainly the topics that I talk about are the ones with um, related to validation of the engineering qualification. Uh, sometimes I share some job opportunities here in Australia as well. Uh, uh, there are sometimes some companies that ask me to, to share some job opportunities. So, and tonight I'll be talking about what can you do if you're stuck in the validation process or if you don't know what or how to do it and that's a very common there's a very common question and very common issue so first things first so we need to understand why you were stuck so what are the objections that are stopping you to advance so that's one of the first questions so and probably the the better way to to explain this is I'll, I'm going to share a story with you, my story, and you can see if this relates to it. So when I started to prepare my CDR some 14 years ago, yeah, one, four, 14 years ago, I got stuck in the process many, many times. And just remembering and thinking about it, the main objections that I had, they were, and probably they are the same obje objections and fears that you have. One, I wasn't really sure about the process. Two, I didn't know uh, how to address the competencies. And if you're going to apply for the professional engineer, there are 16 competencies. Another objection was that uh, I didn't really read the booklet, Engineers Australia booklet with a lot of attention. Another objection, I wasn't sure how to choose the right, the right experience for my career episodes. I had a lot of experience and I didn't really know how to choose the right experience. Uh, also, I wasn't really confident with my level of English. Although I consider myself as a good English speaker at that time, I've studied a lot of back in Brazil and I've worked in companies that speak English. Uh, I studied in overseas, but I wasn't confident with my level of English at all. And I also was studying. I came here to study and I was also working at the same time as probably a lot of you guys studying and working uh, 20 hours per week but nevertheless uh, when you study another 20 hours a week that's your full full day and I was thinking to myself I did not have time to dedicate to my CDR uh, and also uh, freshly arrived in Australia I was busy doing sightseeing and doing short trips at the end of the day Australia was a new place for me and here around Australia, I live in Brisbane. Others, they live in Sydney or Melbourne or Tasmania, Hobart or Adelaide. Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast. There are a lot of uh, beautiful places around where we live. So weekends, we probably go there and uh, we do short trips. But you know what? In the end, the real, re the real reason was that I am a very good procrastinator. Even today, uh, I procrastinate for everything that I think about. And, but what is procrastination? Well, I did some research and uh, just Google dictionary, and it says definition of procrastination 
is that is a mechanism for coping with the anxiety associated with starting or completing any task or decision. Or in simple words, we put things off. We don't want, we don't like to do what we have to do. And also I did some research and then there are usually four types of uh, procrastinators. Type number one is the anxious procrastinator. And people who procrastinate a lot are usually bad at managing their time and often, often end up scheduling more work that they can actually do, leaving no time for fun activities or resting. The fun, the fun procrastinator, they would rather be doing anything except that one dreaded task. And I'd say that uh, preparing the CDR is not probably the, the funniest thing that uh, we probably could be doing. Uh, so after all, there's so many other fun things and exciting things you could be doing instead of doing your CDR. How you can bear to start that boring project? Uh, the other type of procrastinator is that the one, mm, I'd say that I am one of those, there is the plenty of time procrastinator where many people find it difficult to start a project when they know the deadline is a long way off. And CDR preparation probably, uh, well, for some people they have a deadline because they they get into uh, a certain age that they will lose points with migration or they, their visa is expiring soon, though they have to, so they have to work and get their CDR validated, qualification validated, so they can apply for a, a new visa. Uh, but this type of procrastination is clearly visible in the students who often struggle to start any assignment earlier, just than a few days before the deadline who didn't do that at university. You had to do an assignment, an assessment, you waited until the last minute, and then you did your assignment doing hours and hours without sleeping, etc., etc. And the other type of procrastinator is the perfectionist procrastinator. And perfectionists are always striving for the best, as such, are constantly criticizing their own work. And for some perfectionists, the fear of failing or producing work to a low standard can be so overwhelming that they never actually get around to start anything. So if it's not perfect, I'm not even going to start. So uh, that's a perfectionist procrastinator. So you need to identify your objections and try to find ways to beat them. And some strategies there could be. You could prioritize your time if we say that we don't have time, it's a matter of priority. We can always wake up one hour early. We can go to bed one hour later. Uh, we maybe we don't need to check Facebook or Instagram every time that the, that the notification bell rings. Or we could share less funny videos in WhatsApp. Or even not watch too many TV series in Netflix. But if your CDR is not priority, well, then you're probably going to still spend a lot of time doing those things. If your CDR is a priority, you're probably going to find some time. Another objection is if, you're, if money is your objection, what can you do? Again, it's a matter of priority. Uh, I've read that a, a good exercise is to list 50, 5, 0, 50 ways you can make or save some money. If you're not willing to do it, perhaps your CDR is not your priority now. There are a lot of ways that you can make or save that extra cash. Another thing is that uh, you could put together an action plan for your CDR. You've got to list the tasks you have to complete. You establish some deadlines for those tasks. Well, does it look like a project? Yes, your CDR completion can be a very complex project. And luckily you all are great engineers and very good at project management. So to break the ice a little bit, uh, I will read a story that I've shared early this week by email 
that can open your eyes to overcome your procrastination challenges. It's a very interesting and very short story. Uh, so once I read that story, it was written by Martin Conroy from the Wall Street Journal, which goes something like this. 25 years ago, two young people graduated from the same university. They both were very, very similar. Both had, both, they both had average gra uh, grades at university. They were both very, very nice. And just like every young graduate, they both had ambitious dreams for the future. But recently, the two young people returned to university for their 25 years graduation reunion. And they were still very similar. Both were married. The two had three children. And believe me or not, the two of them had gone to work at the same company after they graduated. And they were still there after 25 years. There was just only one difference, a single difference between them. One was the manager of a small department of the company. And the other one was the president of that company. So what made the difference? Have you ever wondered, as I have often wondered, what causes this kind of difference in people's lives? What are the decisions? What are the key turning points that make that type of difference? So what if there's a formula that once you've learned can alter the future path of your validation journey that can completely transform the way you prepare your CDR documentation, the way you think and write your CDR episodes in the summary statement? Would you want to know that formula? Well, I've got it. Uh, for, and for those, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. For those that don't know me, I'm Jerry Sonida. And for the last 10 years, I've been interviewing engineers and reviewing career episodes so they could give their next steps in their engineering professional journey, become a CPA or RPQ. And now I'm teaching that formula and students are already harvesting results. They have overcome their fears. They're beating procrastination and they actually write in their reports with confidence towards their final objective, which is to get approval from Engineers Australia and be recognized as an engineer in Australia and get their life transformation. And the story I told you about the two young people, why were those differences between the two? And the fact is as follows. I don't believe it's, it's they're not intelligent. The difference is not intelligence. The difference is not talent. The difference is not dedication. It is not the fact that one person wants and the other one does not. Honestly, in my opinion, what makes a difference is that there are reasonable people and there are unreasonable people. And by my definition, a reasonable person is one who fails to follow his own instinct, who fails to take small steps towards a goal because it creates a reason in his head that prevents him or her from acting. For example, for some people it's lack of time. For others it's lack of money. For others it's lack of approval from family, husband, wife, children, friends. For others are fear. And for others it's absolute uncertainty that they will not get the results they want. But on the other hand, there are the unreasonable people and unreasonable people are those who take small steps toward their goals despite all the reasons against them despite the lack of time despite the lack of money despite the lack of approval despite the fear and despite the absolute uncertainty of outcome and now i'll tell you a secret the great difference that happened in the world were made by unreasonable people I'm sure that people you admire are people who practice unreasonableness. But why, why I'm telling you this? Because I opened the registrations for the next validation formula online training course. And this is how you could overcome procrastination. This is how you could give your next step towards your engineering qualification recognition in Australia. Maybe you know, maybe not. But validation form is a course where I compile my experience of over 25 years 
as an engineer and 10 years work as a recognized engineer here in Australia. And right now we have a chance to enroll in this next class and be one of the first 20 students and get a very special offer. But this window of opportunity will end on 9th of October when registration closes and the special offer can end at any time. Be quick and don't miss out this, this chance. And believe it or not, all you need to do is to practice unreasonably, unreasonability and take a small step towards your goal. Here between you and me, I want you want to recognize your engineering degree. If not, if you didn't, you probably would have unsubscribed from my list a long time ago, or would you probably uh, log off from Instagram or Facebook. But recognition is not for everyone. Recognition is for the unreasonable. Think about all the great leaps you've ever made in your life to these days. All those challenges. Is being unreasonable a common term between them? Most people I talk, they say yes. And for unreasonable results, you need to practice un unreasonability. I give you this opportunity now. So click in the comments and make your registration. I'll put the links in the comment. In Instagram, if you visit my, my deal, there's a link in there and you can visit my page to know more about the validation formula training. Be unreasonable, make it happen. And legend says that uh, it, one of the greatest pains of people nearly uh, nearing end of life is regret. And I believe it's very hard to find someone at the end of life who feels sorry for being unreasonable. Most people regret not being unreasonable, but they regret not being unreasonable enough when they are given the opportunity. Think about it. So this is a, a, a very short story about how we could uh, overcome procrastination, how we can overcome our objections. And if you have any other objections, put down in the comments, write down in the comments, and I'll be very, very happy to answer. And share this video with your friends, uh, with your colleague engineers that they are procrastinating, that they are having difficulties, they are stuck in the process. So leave in the comments and I'll talk to you next week on Tuesday, 7 p.m. when I'll be back with a new theme. Thank you very much and good night. Bye-bye.